GitHub Copilot claims that it will help you become a better programmer, but will it? Let's find out. If you're new here, I'm Jordan. I'm a PhD student and science communicator. And if you want to hear more about artificial intelligence and emerging tech, subscribe to my channel and follow me on all of my other socials down below. But without further ado, let's get into it. GitHub Copilot is OpenAI's newest foray into automated machine learning or AutoMLs. And it essentially allows you to write up comments or define functions in Visual Studio Code, a per a fairly common code editor, and use artificial intelligence algorithms, specifically codecs, to automatically complete and generate the code based on what you asked for. Codex, the model that Copilot is based on, is essentially a GPT-3 natural language model that has been trained specifically on publicly available open source code on GitHub. So in theory, it should have a lot of training data to help you generate code for any possible situation across most programming languages. Of course, in practice, it turns out to not be quite that simple, as you'll see in the demo in a second, but it is a really interesting idea, especially if you're interested in developing in a language that you're not necessarily all that familiar with. But let's start with the demo. So I got access on August 9th and actually initially didn't realize that you can only use it in Visual Studio Code, which is a code editor that I don't typically use when I'm developing, but is something that I've used in the past, so I was pretty familiar with it. And once it's loaded, it automatically works with any code that you start to type. For the purposes of this demo, I started off by working in Python since it's the machine learning language that most people are familiar with, but I did end up trying a different programming language just to see how well it would work a little bit later on, which I'll show you in a second. As you can see, I started with the prompts that the Get Started Guide has you do, which are pretty straightforward, just having it create a function that calculates the number of days between two given dates, and that seems to work pretty well. You can also have it suggest alternative implementations of that function, which it suggests an additional one that didn't actually seem to be different and then hid, I think, another eight duplicates, which can be helpful if you're looking for multiple different instantiations of a different program. VS Code comes with an autocomplete feature, so if you start typing in a particular function that's associated with a particular library that you're importing, it can fill in the potential options that you might want to use. And this feels almost like an extension of that, where instead of filling in from a known list of libraries, you're filling in code based on the thing that you're asking for, based on the libraries that you've already imported. Essentially, this feels like a kind of autocomplete for programmers, which I definitely think could be a pretty cool application. In a lot of ways, it also feels like a way of searching something like Stack Overflow without having to actually go over to Stack Overflow and copy code back from them. I've definitely found that if there's something that I don't necessarily know how to implement, a quick Google search can get me enough information to get me going, and this is, a, and this is essentially a much faster way of doing that. From there, I tried with slightly more complicated questions, and I think this is where it started to fall apart a little bit for me, and is why, as we'll get into a little bit later, I don't necessarily think that Copilot is going to be stealing anyone's software developer job. So in terms of negative impressions, first of all, if you're not using VS Code, then sorry, you can't use this. So that kind of sucks. Also, as I mentioned earlier, the additional implementations that it gives you aren't necessarily all that helpful because they don't necessarily explain why they implemented it in all these different ways and what makes one way better than the other. Next, I tried to have Copilot essentially develop a basic neural network and train it. And this is where I started running into some issues. Essentially, I had it import things like TensorFlow, Matplotlib, et cetera. And it was able to create a function that would essentially create a neural network object. But when it came to training it, it seemed like it created the first block of code or so, and then started having some holes where things either weren't filled in or just kind of abruptly stopped for some reason and I wasn't entirely sure why. I tried multiple different attempts at this and ran into the same issue every time, so I think it might just be an issue of generating programs of that length. I don't know whether that's a specific limitation of Copilot itself, and I actually requested access to Codex, so if you want a video on that, you can let me know in the comments, because it seems like in Codex that's less of an issue. But that was definitely something that I noticed when I was using it, and it also brings me to my next point, which is that I think that especially if you're new to programming, this can be a helpful tool, but I think it's also important that you know how to do these things yourself before you rely on a system like this. And I say that partially because if you get to a point where Copilot or another automated machine learning system can only generate 
parts of what you need, you still need to know enough to be able to fill in the blanks. More importantly, you also need to know whether or not the code that Copilot is generating is correct and is actually doing the thing that you want it to do. Now, as far as I could tell in the demos that I tried to do for this video, for the most part, it was doing so. Even in the cases where I asked it to generate a function that would train a machine learning model, it was doing so correctly. It just had those weird gaps. So I think if those gaps were filled in correctly, the code would still run correctly. But that's something I know because I know what it should look like because I've developed these from scratch before. Now, while you can use Copilot multiple different programming languages, including Python, JavaScript, TypeScript, Ruby, and Go, I was curious about languages that weren't on that list. So I tried using a more recently developed, I guess, language called Julia. Julia was a programming language that I picked up in my scientific machine learning class last year. It was used for things like parallel programming as well as physics informed machine learning. And it's an interesting language, but it's pretty new. And so I'd imagine that there isn't a ton of data for Copilot to pull from in order to perform well on this kind of language. And in testing it in Copilot, I was right. The function that you see it define here is A, not correct in terms of standard Julia syntax, but B, also doesn't work. So clearly there's still some work that needs to be done when it comes to developing in languages that aren't specified as definitely working by OpenAI. And ideally, it would be cool actually if you could use the OpenAI API to basically fine tune on larger data sets of those languages and see if that works really well. Perhaps that's something that I might be able to do in Codex when I get access. But either way, it would be really cool to see applications in some other programming languages that are a little bit less common. Additionally, the fact that Copilot was trained on publicly available code on GitHub has raised a lot of confusion and concern around proper licensing and whether or not this is considered fair use or whether or not OpenAI should have actually gotten permission from all of those developers to use their code in this way. This is uncharted territory when it comes to using code in this manner, so we'll see what happens there. But Copilot doesn't reproduce original code. It actually will copy explicitly code from existing repositories and occasionally accidentally leaks secret information that isn't supposed to be public. So that's going to be an ongoing issue when it comes to automated machine learning, especially as it relates to systems that are trained on public data sets like GitHub. So when it comes to my initial impressions of GitHub Copilot, I don't think that it's going to take anybody's job anytime soon, but I do think it could be a legitimately useful tool as a sort of autocomplete feature to help people who are already experienced in a particular programming language move through the development process faster, as well as to help people who are newer to different programming languages get functioning code going a little bit faster than they might otherwise. At the same time, as you saw earlier, there are still cases where Copilot code doesn't necessarily work. And that's actually one of the big concerns around the potential widespread use of automated machine learning systems like Copilot. Specifically that relying on systems like this will make us lazier programmers and it will result in systems being deployed that have errors or flaws that someone just didn't catch because they were relying on this automated system. And to avoid this, we as programmers need to be able to look at a block of code, whether we wrote it or not, and be able to tell whether or not it's doing the thing that we or the developer intended it to. In fact, this is something that came up in my things I wish I knew before I started coding video when it comes to being able to both write code that other people can parse, as well as being able to parse other people's code, whether it was written by a human or an algorithm. Being able to parse other people's code is an important skill, and it's only going to get more important as automated code generation becomes more popular. But of course, to be able to tell whether or not Copilot generated code is actually doing the thing that you think it's doing, you'll need to know how to program in Python in the first place. And a great place to start is on Brilliant, who are kindly sponsoring this video. If you haven't already heard, Brilliant is a website and app that can help you learn anything from the basics of Python on programming to quantum computing and machine learning with fun and interactive courses. In fact, they recently updated a bunch of their courses to make them even more interactive, including their course on algorithms where you can master the fundamental problems in algorithms without needing to know how to code. As someone who has taken a lot of online courses and is easily distracted by long lectures and textbooks, I really appreciate how their courses are laid out like a story, keeping me interested as I learn about quantum computing or cryptocurrencies or whatever happened to catch my eye that day. They're also broken down to pieces that I can tackle whenever 
I have a few free minutes in my day. And even though I've been programming in Python for years, their Python programming course has been super helpful on the days when I need a refresher on the basics. So whether you want to be able to catch errors in AI-generated code or just dabble in a new STEM field, head over to brilliant.org slash Jordan, and the first 200 people to sign up will get 20% off the annual premium subscription. You can also click down here to sign up for Brilliant using my code Jordan, and you can check out my video on things I wish I knew when I was starting to code up here. And you can follow me on all of my socials over here and subscribe to the channel. Otherwise, I will see you on Monday. Bye.